And as you can see, they weighed in at 130. They were utterly dried out. I mean, absolutely gaunt. Tonight, Gaddy steps on the scales at 146, a little more than 24 hours later, and Ruelas at 145. They are even in reach. They're virtually even in height, although the tail of the tape shows the two-inch advantage for Gaddy. And there's a two-year age advantage in Arturo's favor as well, although Ruelas would say his experience can't match mine. Punch that numbers, Larry. Here we see that Gaddy is a little bit more active, a little bit more accurate. Ruelas is an outstanding body puncher. And Gaddy has the much more effective jab. This is the punch he expects to, to control the fight with. Ruelas is a hooking fighter, seldom throws straight punches. Rules of the bout with the fight judge and pharmacist, Harold Letterman. The Arturo Gatti, Gabriel Ellis fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. Thank you, Harold. Take it away, Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen from Caesars Atlantic City, main events along with your undisputed Undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, this Bud's for you, present our co-featured main event of the evening. Sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., and the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee Sr., supervisors at ringside for the IBF, Daryl Peebles and Al Lucas. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Robert Gonzalez, William James and John Stewart. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Benji Estevez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Atlantic City, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue and weighing in at 130 pounds. His professional record, 44 victories with only three losses. He has 23 knockouts to his credit from Silmar, California. Introducing the challenger, former WBC super featherweight champion of the world, Gabriel Rilla. And his opponent across the ring, Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, also weighing 130 pounds. His professional record in 29 bouts, he has 28 victories, 23 by knockout with only one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, from Jersey City, New Jersey, presenting the IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Arturo Pandu. Okay, again, man, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Give me a nice, clean one. May the best man win. Touch up. Good luck to both of us. I recall that in the rematch with Tracy Patterson, Gaddy was hit a body punch that took the wind at him and knocked him down in the second round, if my memory is correct. It was ruled a low punch. You can be sure that Ruelas has watched that and will be looking to land some body punches here. Ruelas, an effective body puncher. He has a weakness. It's his tendency to wing shots from the outside and leave himself open up the middle. Gotti is another fighter who gets hit. In fact, this is exciting because they're both terrific young men and they are high contact fighters who hit and get hit. Two throwback fighters, like you said. Both of these guys re remind me of old fighters. And the biggest thing that reminds me of old fighters is how they make the sacrifice to come far, far, far lower than what their normal weight is to have this advantage when they come in the ring to fight. They've gained 15 and 15 and a half pounds over 24 hours. That's a sacrifice. Ruella starts out winging from the outside, and referee Benji Estevez says, Gabe, keep him up. Gotti landed a couple of jabs early.
A tour guy that looks like a full-fledged junior welter or welterweight here tonight. A lot of people believe this will be Gaddy's last fight at 130. The inevitable move to 135 perhaps coming next. Angel Manfredi, who would love to fight Gotti next if Gotti's able to win here, would love to fight him at 130. The word is that Gotti will insist Manfredi comes up at 135. Both fighters have made a couple of statements here in the first round. Willis lands two right hands upstairs. Gotti comes back with a solid right of his own over the top. Watch out for Arturo Gotti's left hook when Willis gets in close. I don't think Ruelas really can hurt Gotti at this point, but I know Gotti can hurt Ruelas. Gabe believes, on the other hand, that he's the better defender. And he could be the better defender, but he's definitely not the stronger puncher. Ruelas, with only 23 knockouts in his 44 fights, Gotti has that many in 29 fights. Left hook to the body by Gotti. Wellis missing upstairs. And there you see what Gabe means about being the better defender as he made Gotti miss twice close in. Three times. He's landed clear shots on Gotti, but they seem to have no effect whatsoever on Gotti. Gotti looks strong. Quickly, let's go to Andrew Galata's dressing room to hear a recitation of the rules in anticipation of the heavyweight title fight. comes out, you keep fighting. When there's a low in the action, we have the mouthpiece replaced, all right? Watch those low punches. I pre I I'm begging you, please watch those low punches, all right? I'm going to tell the same thing to Lennox Lewis. A clean fight all the way around, understood? You can talk about the rabbit punches. I, I will take control. I will take control of that with Lennox Lewis in the room, and I will tell him. I'll take an, every necessary uh, action that I have to take any un, un, sportsman like conduct. Fragrant fouls, I'll tell you right now. If I think that a foul is committed... We come back to live action between Gabriel Willis and Arturo Gatti. As you heard that discussion of rules in Galata's dressing room, it's worth noting that in an effort to draw some of the attention away from Galata's low blow foul problem, Lou Duva has been harping for days on what he sees as Lennox Lewis's tendency to hold fighters and rabbit punch them. Wellis landing a quick left hook inside. Gotti hasn't really established combinations yet. Missing with the jab there. Gotti begins to land the jab. Willis has been slipping it fairly effectively up to this point. A little short right hand landed inside for Willis. And an uppercut for Willis. Left hook banged against Gotti's right glove. I think Willis is landing some pretty effective punches in there, whether he's winning the rounds or not right now. And with the history of Gotti of his face blowing up, it could tell as the fight goes on. Actually, Ruelas may be winning these rounds. He's landing a great number of punches here. Larry referred to Gotti's tendency to swell around the eyes. In at least two of his bouts, he swelled up within the first two or three rounds. Notably, the Wilson Rodriguez fight, of course, when he had to come back blind to win with that sensational left hook shot. Yeah, Gabe is landing a, a, a number of punches here on Gotti this early. Gotti landing two right hands over the top as Ruelas left himself open while searching for the body. Quick left hook inside by Gotti. I think that punch may have hurt Gabe Ruelas bad. I think Gabe is truly hurt right now. The left hook landed on the point of the chin. Now, Ruelas allows one to wander low, and the right hand lands for Gatti. One thing, too, Jim, the big weight difference has these guys looking like welterweights or even middleweights. They're much, much slower than the normal 130-pound fighters because of the big increase in weight. Ruelas 
Price has been flat-footed and slow ever since Gatti caught him inside with that left hook, and referee Benji Estevez is not going to rule this a knockdown. This is a slip. Let's see if Ruelas can regain his foot movements as Gatti starts to go to the body with the right hand. Left hook lands for Ruelas and another one for Gabe. Round two comes to a close. Willis is standing still in the corner, and he smiles at Estevis as Gotti lands what Willis said was a low blow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, right now, you got to keep that right hand up more. I do not want to see you get hit with that fucking hook again. Okay. Now look, you're getting to him good. You got to shorten up on your punches. Take your time. Don't get in a brawl with them there. Just be smart and don't sit on the ropes. Don't let him pin you on the ropes. I want you to turn off now. We've been working on that a long time, not sitting on the ropes. Don't stand in the top and stay low. Okay? okay. Stay low. Beautiful. He don't want no more. He start pulling back already. Here we see Gaddy landing his best punches in the first two rounds. A big right hand that Relis comes back from at the cost of another le as a left hand that is just as devastating. That shows his trip. And Willis' is chin. Yeah, both guys are landing heavy stuff, Roy, and both are taking it so far. Willis relying almost exclusively on power shots, as is his habit. He's thrown 98 of them in the first two rounds and landed 37, but Gatti is landing more than half of his power shots, and that uppercut grazes the front of Willis' face. Gabe starting to wing wider and wider with those shots, and as he allows his arms to drift to the outside, that'll make more and more opportunities for Gatti to come up the middle with the jab and the left hook. Yeah, yep. but I'm noticing already that there may be a slight swelling under the left eye of Gatti. Well, he starts to swell when he gets up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be here in the, if I'm him in the ninth, 10th, and 11th rounds if he's swelled up, because Ruelas is very strong. He's in obviously excellent condition. He seems very confident. Sharp jab by Gatti. Uppercut for Ruelas. Just a grazing punch. Gotti with the right hand lead. Ruelas getting to the body momentarily. But both fighters punch out puts slowing down a little bit here in the third round after the furious action in round two. I'm sure to pick back up soon. Gabe was not pushing the issue like as much as he was in the first and second round either. That's why it slowed a little bit. Because now God is dictating the pace of the fight with his jab. I don't know if Gabe is tired or if he's just taking a little time off. Oh, good shot by Gabe. Or he may just be taking a little time off. And well, waiting for Gotti to come to him as he did to accept that left hook shot. Come on now. Chopping right hand by Ruelas, and then a bad low blow. Next one's going to cost you. Keep him up, all right? Let's go. You, right. heard, you heard the referee say one more, and it will cost him a point. So the first official warning to Ruelas for low blows. Keep it clean, guys. Keep it clean. Another chopping right hand lands inside for Gabe. And you know he didn't mean to do it. It's just that he throws such wide punches sometimes. And the guy's bending over, so it's harder for him to control where that punch is going to land. the chest by Gotti. Wella smiles at him. Usually the bravado of the smile is false. Round three comes to a close. And we talk to you about the problem of swelling eyes for Arturo Gatti. It's something that has haunted him 
in the recent fights in his career. In a moment, we're going to show you a look at how Gatti looked in the late rounds of his first fight, November of 1995, against Tracy Harris Patterson. You can see how badly the left eye swelled in that fight. And then, just a little bit more than three months later, when he fought against Wilson Rodriguez in Madison Square Garden, that's the way he looked in the second round. And we think that this normally happens when he has to lose a lot of weight, struggle to make weight at 130 pounds. And of course, as we mentioned, that was clearly the case here this week. I charge extra for trips. Don't try to knock them off. You know what Slide under punches. So go ahead, try to box them in a little bit more. Okay? Suck is out, let's go! Suck is out! Get that water out. Stay right there, puppy. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Those high cheekbones give Gatti his dramatic 30s movie look. In fact, in one of his better lines, among many, Larry Merchant once said he looks as though he should be fighting with a fedora on his head. <laughs> Get that ice cube out of there. And a big shoulder padded suit. Double breasted. I always thought that that Gatti was something like a gat. You know, they used to call the Gat. Good combination by Chiro Gatti. And, and they you see the power. And he's got a Gatling gun in his fist. I tell you what, Gabrielis is not backing down here. He is here to win this fight. Gabrielis is all man. He will give it everything he's got here tonight. And he's doing just that. If I were Tiro's corner, though, I would tell him to do just what he's doing right now. Use the jab, box, don't sit in there and take all those unnecessary shots. Outbox him with the jab. The jab is effective. It doesn't allow Gabe to land punches, and it keeps him off balance. Just jab your way to victory. Don't worry about knocking him out. Get him worked down a little bit, then try to knock him out every now and then. Of course, left in the misfortune that befell Ruelas when Jimmy Garcia died as the result of injuries sustained in their fight on May 6, 1995. Deeply disturbed Ruelas. He remained in contact with Garcia's family for a long time, was haunted by the loss of that opponent. And all of Gabe's family and friends are only hoping that he can somehow find the inner peace to come back to fighting freely and comfortably at the level at which he once fought. If he could do that here tonight, I think they could stand a loss just to see Gabe back at his best. Well, I don't think he has losing in mind. He's landing a terrific flurry here the last 20 seconds. He's having an excellent round. We've lost our clock momentarily, so I'll tell you that we're coming right up to one minute to go in the round right now. Left hook to the body, right to the rib cage by Gatti. Ruelas who fought so well in the first two minutes of the round, now finds himself pinned and stationary against the ropes, and Gatti unloads another one of those Gatling gun left hooks. These guys are throwing some mean punches here. Everything has bad intent written all over it. Well, is taking the punches and coming back to Gatti's body. Oh, Gatti is out. Gatti is hurt. Gatti is hurt bad. Gatti stumbles. Ruelas with a chance. Arturo Gatti momentarily wobbly on his feet. Oh, Hard now he's out. Now, but that was a great uppercut. Yeah, he's hurt very bad. I think he's going to go down if he's not careful. Oh, good body shot by Arturo Gatti. What a battle. <laughs> makes this guy so remarkable to watch. Don't go on war with him. Come on, leave your hand. Don't go on war with him. I know, I know. Go, do your left, back it up. Huh? You stay in front of the guy. Don't stay in front of the guy, just move. Don't go on war with him. Come on. Take a look and see what the punches that did the damage to Gaddy, and it was that one right there. Then a low blow. And he looks like a limp rag doll on the corner there, and somehow he is surviving this onslaught Stay in and corner. comes Stay back corner. at the end of the round to let Ruelas know he isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Not yet. Round four, a brilliant round for Gabe Ruelas, who landed 44 power shots in that round to 22 for Gotti overall. Ruelas, 46 out of 88, 52% in the round. We told you you'd get your money's worth from this bout. 
And Ruelas has come out like he's looking to find out of how much Gatti has left and if he can get rid of him right now. I don't know if that's a smart thing to do because he should know that Arturo keeps more. Oh, good Battle shot. Battle of uppercuts, both men landing. Big uppercut shots. This is a war. An all-out war. And it verges on becoming a war of redemption for Gabriel Ruelas. And now here comes Gotti again. And Gabe has a mouse over his left eye, under his left eye now. Two minutes left in the round. We'll keep you posted as long as our clock watch is it, it, temporarily out of commission. They're only one minute into this stanza, and it is vicious. And a guy that has a cut under his left eye now. Right hand bomb, and Roella says, hey, you can't hurt me. I'm going to hit you back. Uh, that left uppercut is a vicious weapon for Gabe Roella here tonight. But look at the combinations from Gotti. This is his fight. This is what makes Gotti. Both men selling out defensively to do the damage they can do. <laughs> Roella looks... I don't know, a hair stronger in terms of what he's able to take. And that may get him through this. Gotti wobbling again and badly cut under the left eye. Oh, there are... Low blow by Gotti. Estevez says keep him up. Right hand lands over the top. Oh, that goes good. Willis. I don't think he'll make it back. Two well, big right close. hand shots by Gotti. Seven. Monster shots. Swollen Gabrielis gets up and it's it says no more. Can you believe Arturo Gatti? <laughs> oh, what a drama. Come on, baby. Come on. And even though he even lost, nice. I say Gabrielis came all the way back tonight. Yes, yeah. he did. All the way back. We, you know, I said the great fights of the 40s and 50s, and here we see it again with Arturo Gatti. He just seems to have a bottomless well of willpower that just can't stop him. The sign says, hey, you can almost knock me out, but in the end, I'm gonna get you. Wilson Rodriguez could tell Gabriel Ellis a thing or two about what it feels like to have Arturo Gatti almost out of there and then feel the thunder. All right, Roy, let's take a look first at the uppercut by Gabe Ruelas that hurt Arturo Gatti early in the round. That was the uppercut that he was landing all night long. That's how he first hurt Gatti, and that's how he last hurt Gatti. But you have to remember, Arturo Gotti is one of the strongest punches pound for pound in the division. There it is, right off the hook. It came right up under his left elbow, and it landed clearly. Now let's take a look at the end of the fight and watch the right-hand shots by left, Gotti. Left hook, I think, is what ended it. Right yep, there. You're right. Right there, and that was all she wrote. Yep, so the two right hands, one big, one little, setting up the monster left hook. There's the left hook, and over it is. I think the body shots are really what weakened Gabriel Ruelas. At the end, it was just a matter of time before Arturo caught him with a big shot. What they don't realize Well, is as that, long as Arturo could stand up. Yes, but Arturo wants this kind of fight. This is what makes Arturo. You have seen this over and over and over again. That's Arturo Gotti's strength, to go into battles, to come out, pull victory out of the clinches of defeat. That's his thing. Why would you go in there and swap and trade punch with a guy that can punch and that is known for the comeback victory like Arturo Gotti? And what an effort by Gabriel Willis. A strong effort, but maybe not the smartest one. Seldom has a knockout victim been more valiant than that young man. Here's Michael Buffer with the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, by way of Caesars Atlantic City, 
Referee Benji Estevez calls a halt to the bout following the knockdown. The official time, two minutes, 22 seconds of round number five. The winner by knockout victory and still IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Arturo Hunder.